Joining me in studio this morning is Dr. Jonathan Tripp. And, of course, he's got a couple of thoughts today about the change of the seasons and what that may mean uh, for your health and certain things you should be thinking about. Technically, the first day of fall is about two weeks away. I think maybe two weeks uh, probably from tomorrow or so. But, uh, first of all, welcome back to the program. Thank you. Thank you. You are, you are, You were looking at a list this morning, and one of those things you did mention right off the top of my head when I saw it, because I know you have a background when it comes to caring for people's skin, uh, but just this time of year, it might be a good idea after summer to have a bit of a checkup done on how healthy your skin is. Yeah, I, it's interesting. I'd like to do a whole discussion on this, and maybe we will next week. I have a couple of ideas between uh, what I'm debating on. But uh, one is often in European countries or even as far east as Russia, there is a tradition of after summer, you spend some serious time on recovering your skin from the, from the sun damage and, you know, the fun in the sun. And so we do a lot of that in our office. And so most people think, oh, well, that's just cosmetic. And the truth is, is it is cosmetic. It does make things look better. It's only skin deep. But it also helps to avoid some things that we look for uh, for serious health issues like precancers and cancers and moles that are changing because they've had that sun exposure. So um, definitely that's something to consider now that we're mostly out of our you know, heavy sun exposure part of the season. I was going to say, most people with the temperature the way it was this morning, they're not necessarily inclined to be outside a lot, but uh, yeah, unless well, they have to be. It's, I keep hoping, you know, because I'm a summer guy, but uh, the uh, temperature on Saturday is supposed to be 80, but we've been running in the high 60s, and I don't think that 80 will last for very long. <laughs> no, no, certainly not. Overall, people coming in, I mean, there's a certain time of year, too, they should be thinking about, just an overall, I guess, general exam of some sorts. Yeah, today's topic, we're just calling it the autumn assessment. You know, as we head into fall, what, what else should you be thinking about? You know, you've had a busy summer. Uh, if you have kids, you've probably been running around and going to various activities. And so now it's uh, getting back to a routine, and there's a couple of things that happen. One is we get back into uh, school and lots of... Uh, upper respiratory and type uh, quickly spreadable illness gets there, some of that skin. In fact, I had a little girl yesterday with bumps on the skin that they're trying to figure out where it came from, and I said, somebody else, and it's a wart virus called Molluscum contagiosum. That's a great name. I practiced it. But uh, there are things we can do uh, that to help avoid that, but also you know, just be aware that when things come up, it's time to go check it out rather than wait and see what happens a lot of times. Um, you know, I guess I can't say that too strongly because I'm not a big fan of the moment you have a sniffle, you need to go to the doctor. On the other hand, if that sniffle has gone on for a week or so, there's probably something else going on. So, you know, the first day or two of a fever, I'm not alarmed, but if that hangs on for very long, we need to seek some help because there can be something more serious going on. But let me kind of get down to the autumn assessment. Um, and this is kind of a pitch to use your, uh, your benefits from your health insurance. If you have health insurance, use it. Uh, in fact, that's one of the things we were talking offline about, you know, the, w there's a correlation between wealthier people and living longer. And there's a lot of reasons, but one of those reasons is they're using their health insurance benefits. They're not afraid to go to the doctor. They're not, uh, you know, living by the adage of, you know, well, if I'm not dying, why should I go? Because it's kind of like saying uh, financially, you know, if, if I'm not bankrupt, why should I worry about what I spend? It, it, you know, there is a correlation there, and a lot of it is, is if we're not paying attention. When it finally does show up, it's already kind of too late in a lot of instances. So um, the wellness exam is a big one that almost every insurance now provides a, quote, free once-a-year wellness exam where we can do blood work. We can really get a look at where you stand health-wise from cholesterol to how your kidney and liver function are, how's your blood sugar, you know, do we have to worry about any of those things? You know, are you anemic? Those are all real easy screenings, uh, including even checking, you know, is your thyroid functioning? And so those are things if you have fatigue or other complaints, sometimes it's just a simple blood test that we say, oh, well, here's a, an obvious thing that we can fix and you'll, you'll, you'll feel a lot better. Um, another thing is we get, we don't think of September as the end of the year. But October is the last quarter of the year, and a lot of people will have a deductible that they've already met for whatever reason, you know, surgery, or they've just had other health visits. Um, 
and skin procedures that we do an awful lot of in our office, like mold removal or precancers or cancers, things that you're concerned about, you know, now's the time to get those checked out because if you wait till December 15th, likelihood somebody else thought of the same thing and already has an appointment and then your deductible starts over January 1st and you wish you'd have done it in September. So that's one I would encourage you to look at. If you need a procedure done, if you, or, or if you think you might, it's really a good time to say, well, let me check that out because, you know, I'm near or I've already met my deductible, so my cost out of pocket is really low. So that's uh, something I'd say really consider sooner than later because, you know, as they say, it's space available only. We've got more coming up with Dr. Jonathan Tripp in just a moment from Tripp Family Medicine right here in Twin Falls, Idaho. It's called Better Health with Tripp Family Medicine. Bill Colley answering the telephones on News Radio 1310, KLIX, and News Radio 1310.com. Our guest this morning is Dr. Jonathan Tripp. He joins us, of course, Better Health with Tripp Family Medicine. We do this every week between 8.30 and 9 o'clock right here on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. Bill Colley answering the telephones this morning and the number 736-0300. And, of course, uh, the doctor and I were just talking a moment ago about how people use health insurance. You're obviously paying for it. Uh, you may as well use it, right? Yeah, there, there's a lot of truth to that. Uh, sometimes... Uh, like your car insurance, you think, well, you know, if I get in an accident, I'm going to have a higher premium, which for the most part is true. If you have, you know, huge use, like, you know, tens of thousands of dollars, chances are your health insurance will go up. But if it's a necessary, you know, the, the premium change is minimal because usually it's based on a group rate. On the other hand, if you're doing wellness and you're doing sick visits, uh, you know, half a dozen times a year, almost no chance that your uh, health insurance premium is going to go up. So using it once is not a threat. Using it 10 times is probably not a threat. You know, if you're, if you're in my office every other day, I'm probably going to tell you you're a threat. So, you know, yeah. that's, <laughs> but at the same time to so many, especially, you know, guys are famous for this because from about, you know, age 20, 25 on up, they don't have anybody kind of telling them, get to the doctor's office, let's go take a look. And they feel good. And for the most part, when we do these uh, screenings, everything is good. So, you know, the mentality is, is why should I do this? Why should I show up? And the answer is, is kind of like, why should you change your oil, you know, on your car? And because it's good for it. Or, you know, you might find something because you looked. And then maybe you can catch it while it's really early and fix it and never have it become a problem. So that's the purpose of the uh, annual wellness exam is to really just say, where where is my snapshot of my health at this point? Where do I where does that look? And there's going to be certain periods of your life. I mean, you get to a certain age, then there's certain things that you you should always have that checkup for. Uh, but in each decade, there's probably something new that comes along. That there is to some degree. The uh, big one for men and women is when we hit the age of fifty. Then all of a sudden, there's a bunch of these different screening exams. Um, and I'll just talk about you know straight up. Enjoy this next part because, you know, it's meant for at least PG visitor, uh, listeners. The, uh, the colonoscopy, uh, which is a scope that, you know, goes through your entire colon, entering at the anus. So that's uh, not one that most people look forward to. It's a once every 10 years kind of screening. But what are we looking for? Colon cancer. I mean, they may find other things that, you know, are worth knowing about. But the main reason we're doing this is to avoid death. And so it's the kind of thing that, you know, they sedate you so you won't remember much and you definitely won't remember how the procedure went. Uh, but the things learned by having a camera go through your colon, uh, you know, can be life or death. And so cancer from the colon is generally kind of slow growing. That's why they say if it's not there, we'll see in 10 years. Another one for men is the, uh, and women, is the rectal exam. But for men, that includes a prostate exam, so it's about 10 seconds of embarrassment. Um, and uh, if the prostate is un irregular or hard or unusual in size, that warrants having a further look from a urologist. And again, we're looking for a cancer that, you know, won't kill you today, but by the time you have symptoms, it's been 10 years too late. So that's one after age 50 is annual for both men and women. Uh, why do the rectal exam? It's the mini version of the colonoscopy that you're also looking for blood in the stool. So it's a colon cancer screening annually. But the colonoscopy is the big view, but it's only every 10 years. 
uh, breast exams or in particular mammograms for women. Depending on which group you uh, look to their advice, it starts at age 40 or age 50 or age 45, so there's a little confusion there. But generally, if you have no family history of breast cancer, uh, my recommendation would be do an initial mam uh, mammogram at age 45. If that's totally clear, then you're probably okay to go annually uh, at age 50 thereafter. And Again, this is cancer that people are very aware of, breast cancer. In fact, it's the cancer we're most aware of. And you would think that uh, most people die of breast cancer. Well, that's not true. Uh, but it is the one we have the greatest uh, publicity and you know community education about. So the way you check for that is a self-breast exam, which if you have any worries about or need to know more about, come to our office. We do a lot of teaching. I have plenty of women that come for their annual exam and say, I'm just not comfortable or just don't know what I'm doing with this, and within about five minutes, they're experts. So the, these kinds of things should be done. Um, you know, we don't do brain scans. We're not doing uh, CAT scans of your tummy. Just as a screening, that comes along depending on symptoms. But these other ones we just talked about are ones that are, are life-threatening cancers that can be screened for, can be figured out. And the one that I probably do the most in my office is a skin cancer screening, where we're going head to toe, kind of looking at every bump, lump, mole, you know, discoloration, so that you know what's okay and what's not. And oftentimes, the big, bad, scary ones are not the problem, the one that brought you to the office. And it's some little incidental flat, dark mole that you wouldn't even pay attention to. Again, I'm leaning on my experience from just yesterday. A lady who came in was had uh, discolorations on her face and arms and really felt, you know, had a lot of, you know, sun exposure as a teenager and, you know, really worried about these big dark spots, none of which were a threat. And then on her, you know, kind of lower back, I find this little uh, oh, quarter size of an eraser, black flat uh, lesion that looks like a flat mole, but because of its darkness, it becomes the biggest threat on her body. And, you know, we shifted gears from all of her fears to, no, this is the number one priority. And so that, that skin exam is another way to avoid a potentially life-threatening melanoma or other ones that aren't so threatening but still disfiguring, you know. So we can freeze a lot of things on skin before you have to have things cut on. So I'd much rather see you in a preventative way. I was thinking as you were bringing this up, I saw the documentary a few weeks ago about Vince Lombardi who died at the age of 57, and uh, was colon cancer. And he had refused a colonoscopy for years. He just felt uncomfortable about it. If he'd had it done and they'd been able to find it early, he might have coached another 10 years. And as successful as he was, likely had a, a long life. And then a coworker of mine many, many years ago uh, did a self-breast exam. She found a lump, but she was so horrified she ignored it for a while. And it ended up killing her before it was done. Both of these cases, you've got people who are uncomfortable about this. How do you get around that when you're dealing with patients who have that discomfort? Well, let me, uh, you know, that's a good question. How do you get around it? Uh, you, I can threaten, cajole, try to persuade. Probably my best uh, discussion is my own, and that is, is what would be my fears about doing one of these screenings? And the colonoscopy, you know, it's uncomfortable. You know, you're, somebody is putting something where you don't want anything put, um, you're worried about discomfort, the prep the day or night before, you're going to be, you know, sitting on the toilet an awful lot. And so this, there's a lot of uh, socially unacceptable parts of this. But the reality is, is once it's over, it's probably over for 10 years, and you can feel reassured that you're not going to be a Vince Lombardi that dies early, you know, uh, unnecessarily. And so... Um, you know, the motivation is, is, you know, you want to make sure you're living and living healthy rather than dying of a very painful uh, cancer that you didn't need to have because it could be cured, you know, in a very early stage. You know, it's very similar to skin cancer, very early stage, but skin we can see. It's an easy screening, so people aren't afraid of that one. I want to mention Dr. Jonathan Tripp is our studio guest. And if you have a comment or question for the doctor today, 736 Zero three hundred. That's seven three six zero three hundred. We should also point out uh, you have contact information at the office too. You bet. Our uh, phone number at our office, as, as long as you're writing phone numbers down, is two zero eight 
That's 208 933 4400. And uh, you can re reach us on Facebook at Trip Family Medicine. You can also uh, reach us via our website, which is tripfamilymedicine.com. And uh, happy to you know take phone calls. In fact, if you have uh, serious questions, let's call and get you in touch with a nurse. And if they uh, are easily answered, that may be great. And otherwise, the nurses will let you know. Let's get you in and talk more seriously about whatever your questions are. I know you wanted to mention flu shots today. Now, I had one at work. My employer used to do them for us, and I had one at work. This is nearly 20 years ago, uh, and it was the first time I had it done. I've not had it done since. I've been, I think, relatively lucky. If I've had the flu, I don't know because I don't think I've had it in close to 30-some years. But uh, as we get older, does that become more critical? Yeah, thanks for bringing that up. What they call the extremes of age, you know, younger children up to age two, three and anybody, especially over 65, but, you know, probably in their 50s, uh, for, are, they are the ones that are at risk of death. Uh, the flu is very inconvenient, takes people out of work for a week at a time, terrible headache and congestion and upper respiratory and lower respiratory troubles, body aches. So it's no fun when you get it. Um, but uh, the truth is, is most of us from about age three up to about, you know, mid-50s, we won't die of this because our bodies are strong enough to handle it. But uh, there were, uh, I think I read yesterday, um, it is 185 children in the U.S. that died of the flu last year, and almost all of them had no vaccination. So that's one statistic. But uh, the big deal is, is you know, you get the flu and then you get pneumonia on top of that, and then 20% of the people with pneumonia die no matter what age. So. It, it can be very life-threatening. I would encourage the flu vaccine. Uh, of note for this year is the flu mist, the no nasal spray rather than the injection, is not going to be available because they found last year it was not effective. And so they, they've turned, for this year at least, to being all injectable, which makes those of us that don't like shots not as excited. <laughs> we have a caller with us. Caller, you're on the air at 855 with Dr. Jonathan Tripp. Yeah, on a cold and screening, what's kind of the cost of that? You, that, is you a, that is a great question, and the truth is is uh, it depends on where you go. Um, if you have insurance, your insurance will limit the cost, and most of the time we'll consider that a screening exam if you're 50 or over, and most of that cost uh, the insurance will pay for. So uh, thanks for bringing that up. But if you're paying out of pocket and on your own, it is worth shopping around. There are... You know, within our bigger system here, there's a tendency for it to be a higher price because it's a monopoly type system. So going to a larger town like Boise or even Salt Lake or even Pocatello in some, you know, instances, you may find a substantially lower cost. And uh, that's, you know, I've, I've heard, th this is off the top of my head, but in other areas where I've worked, metropolitan areas, it was about a $900 exam, but I've heard, you know, double and triple that here locally. So if you're paying out of pocket, so... It is worth calling around and saying, hey, I need this at your hospital or who you're really calling are the, the GI doctors, the gastroenterologists. They, these are the ones that do the colonoscopies or a general surgeon. Um, and they will be able to tell you their cost and could connect you with the hospital to tell you wherever they do the scope, what's the additional cost of doing that. I want to thank you for the call. I we've only got a couple of minutes left. Speaking of cost, with the with the flu shot, that's relatively inexpensive. Yeah, very inexpensive. I mean, at most thirty dollars, if you have health insurance, most of them are quote free to you. Uh, and the last thing I wanted to bring up is if you have a health savings account or like a cafeteria plan, often those plans are a use it or lose it. So you get to the end of your uh, your premium year, which most cases is you know our calendar year. So by the end of December. If you have not used that, you lose it. And so whether that is for a colonoscopy or whether that's for uh, cosmetic-looking chemical peels at our office, all of that can be done through your uh, health savings account. And, uh, and again, uh, just put some money in there because obviously, too, you may end up, there's always the threat of that catastrophic need, too, as well. Absolutely. No, that's, if you're healthy now, now is the time to build that account if you have a plan that you can keep that from year to year. And that's becoming more uh, common, but uh, in years past, it was a use it or lose it every year. So I experienced that once when I was younger. <laughs> th that you lost it? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I didn't have any need for it, and I did lose it. But as you said, there have been some changes made. 
very quickly, before we wrap up, people again would like to get in touch with you at the office. Sure, 933-4400. That's our telephone, 933-4400. Uh, website, tripvalleymedicine.com. Or, uh, you know, as they say, like us on Facebook at Trip Valley Medicine. We'll, uh, we'll chat with you again, I know, very soon. Um, I know the rotation. I, I think I'm here next week, and I've, <laughs> I've got some fun topics. We might talk about uh, financial health and how that equates to uh, your physical health. Or we might go back to a little bit of the uh, cosmetic stuff that we didn't finish up about a month ago. Super. We'll talk to Dr. Tripp again in a few days. Uh, we've got another hour of the program coming up. This is Top Story with Bill Colley on News Radio 1310, KLIX, and News Radio 1310.com. And a bit more of the series of interviews I did with some of our elected officials and people running for public office at the Twin Falls County Fair coming up in just a few minutes.